So, Dr. Leinster, um, a big announcement for your organisation today, but um, let's look back first of all. How far has the Environment Agency come culturally in the last five years? Because you, you've laid out a lot of the details, but it's had to make a massive change culturally, hasn't it? Well, I think we've come a long way. We've learnt as we've been going that we need to move from a tell and sell to an engagement and a working with. Um, so some of the key themes which are within the, the new environment strategy going forward is about how we're going to work with communities and how we're going to work with partners because the challenges are so huge that we need to be working with people to be able to deliver. Now looking forward, um, there's a long list of, of priorities for you. Can you put them in any sort of order? What for you are the very top priorities over the next five years? Well, the Environment Agency is quite a complex body and there are distinct areas of work that we work in. Um, so for flood risk management, which is about two thirds of our funding, then what we're looking to do is to protect more houses. We estimate that we can protect up to 200,000 more houses, create more habitat, provide faster forecasting and flood warning for people. Then in terms of water resources, um, which is another chunk of our work, we need to make sure that people are providing sufficient water for people, but also not taking too much water out of the environment so that they have a, destroy habitats and wildlife. Um, then there's a whole area of our work which is around regulating business and we want to be working with um, the business that wants to take this agenda forward, helping them with advice and guidance, helping them comply with legislation and then to make sure that those people who are acting illegally we stamp out and we're firm and fair but I don't see any room for any illegal activity. Now uh, going back to the point about business, one of the things that's come up over the past couple of days is, this, is a surprise perhaps following the particular um, section of the conference yesterday where some of the major business leaders in this country spoke. There's been a surprise at how far those companies appear to be moving. What's your sense of the business culture at the moment on, on the issues that, that you lead on? I think there's a wide spectrum. I think we saw to yesterday the good businesses, those who realise that um, consumers want green products, they want the companies that they go to to be thinking about environmental issues. Right at the other end, there are those people who act illegally, mainly around waste, um, but they see how they can make money out of dealing with um, waste in an illegal way, illegal exports, just dumping stuff. Um, so there's a wide spectrum and what we're trying to do is to work with business to make sure that there's more at the good end and that we drive out the poor. Okay, so going to a couple of points um, from your five-year plan, um, one of them particularly, support low-carbon technologies and that whole area. What form uh, would you like that support to take over the next five years? Well, there's a couple of areas that we're working on, um, in particular low-head hydro. That is use of weirs and mills on existing river systems to use that water to generate electricity. Um, now there are some challenges because we're taking water out of a river system, there's the whole issue about fish and what impact those hydro schemes could have on fish. So what we're doing is we've provided with the trade body um, simple guidance so that people can steer their way through what can be a complex area. And what we're trying to do is to make it as simple as possible for people who are applying um, and for us to remove the complexity. So that's one area. The other area is on biofuels. Um, there are some good biofuels and there are some not so good biofuels and we've provided a tool which will enable people to, to analyse, to work out what the environmental impact is associated with the biofuel that they're proposing. Now, how important is it to, to be 
in a sense, the cultural leader for environmental change in this country. I mean, you are probably the organisation which most publicly has the name environment, the word environment in its name. So how, how important is it for you to be at the leading edge of the whole debate and change for, for climate change? Well, we need to be actively engaged in the climate change debate. Um, we deal with flood risk and we deal with water resources. Both of those are on the front line of climate change. That's where we'll see first, most probably, a number of the impacts, along with habitats changes. So we are there at the centre of the debate. The other thing, though, for me, is that we need to be an exemplar as an organisation. If we're telling other people to do something, then we need to be doing it. So we've reduced our car mileage and um, van mileage over two years by 25%. We're just constructing a new office building in the centre of Bristol. It's got the highest score ever for an office building, the highest environmental score ever for an office building um, in the UK. So we're leading by example, and I think that's important as well. Uh, in, the, in this five-year plan, I mean, the, the word being used to describe it is ambitious. Um, for ambitious, people often read difficult. Um, how difficult is it to devise a five-year strategy when the science, when the environment itself is changing so rapidly at the moment? Well, we need to be aware of, of the changes that are going on and, and to be nimble and fleet of foot, that if the science said something else or if the evidence is saying something else, that we're able to move. Um, but we also need to provide some um, certainty within the work that we're doing to make sure that we're carrying on and people know what to plan for within the Environment Agency because we're a big organisation with 13,500 people, we spend 1.2 billion a year, um, therefore we need to, to have excellent plans and that's what I believe that we have. This um, says what we will do over the next five years um, but we might have to adjust it depending on, on other circumstances. And um, looking ahead to Copenhagen next week, what would you like to see from that? Well, I think Copenhagen, as we heard yesterday um, at the conference, is going to be a step along the way. It's not going to be the final destination. And I hope that it's, it's a firm step forward and that the commitments that need to be made are made, but I don't think it's going to be the final destination. And talking of steps forward, one of the themes that's come out in the past couple of days has been, and I think a lot of people would describe it as this, the breath of fresh air of, of the young people who've been around here talking about 2050. How old will you be in 2050? What sort of world they'd like to see in 2050? What sort of world would you like to see in 2050? Well, when I was thinking about how old I'd be, I'd most probably be in an old people's home because I'm being 96. Um, so I'd quite like to see any world. No, the, the, the world that I would like to see is a world where people have taken into account climate change, have done something about it. As I said at the end of my uh, presentation this morning, I think that we need to be the generation that addresses climate change, that addresses other environmental issues that we're facing and does something about it and wins because I think we can deal with this. I think that the way that we have dealt with other big global environmental issues in the past gives us confidence that if we get people working together, climate change can be tackled. So what I would like to see is a place where my children and hopefully my grandchildren are able to live good lives and that people are able to live good lives around the world. And one final question from that. What have you heard in the past couple of days that takes us towards that goal? I think that there is a lot of goodwill um, of people who um, are now looking at the issues, but going beyond talking about it as an issue and talking about the action that needs to be taken. And that's what we need to get to. Um, it isn't about talks about talks. What we need are action plans and people making a real difference on the ground. And that's every single one of us. Dr Leinster, thank you very much.